All right, now we're going to go ahead and do the uh, derivative of the inverse hyperbolic cotangent. So uh, now that we've already done uh, arc singe, arc cosh, and arc tange, uh, this one and the next two, um, arc uh, inverse hyperbolic secant and inverse hyperbolic cosecant, uh, and this one are not going to be that bad, uh, which is good. So here, ddx of uh, inverse coth of x equals 1 over 1 minus x squared, uh, which is actually the same thing as the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic tangent, uh, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but now we have the restriction that uh, absolute value of x has to be greater than 1. So in other words, um, x is less than negative 1 or uh, x is greater than positive 1. Okay, so remember, that's what that means. Um, and again, just like with the other restrictions, uh, this isn't really a calculus thing. It just comes from the definition of the uh, inverse hyperbolic cotangent function. So let's go ahead and see why this is true. Um, if we say, let's go ahead and start like this, y equals coth inverse of x. So this means uh, coth y equals x, right? Um, but remember, coth is uh, 1 over tange, so this means uh, 1 over tange of y uh, equals x. So uh, this is the same thing as saying 1 over x equals tange of y, right? So, um, so here, from this step, you can multiply both sides by tange of y, and then divide both sides by x, and you'll end up with this here, okay? Uh, now, this is the same thing as saying uh, inverse tange of 1 over x equals y, okay? So what do we have here? Uh, we have y equals inverse tange of 1 over x, but we also have y equals coth inverse of x, okay? So y equals this, y equals that, therefore this and that have to equal each other. So coth inverse of x equals uh, inverse tange of 1 over x. So uh, if we want to remember, uh, it's because this is equal to y and this is equal to y, so the transitive property says they have to equal each other. Um, so now we want to take a derivative. Okay, we want to find the derivative of inverse coth. So d dx of inverse coth of x is just going to be d dx of inverse tang of 1 over x. And this is just going to be a chain rule thing now. Okay, it's just going to be a chain rule thing. So uh, here, if we start at the x, first thing we do is 1 over x, and then we do inverse tang of that. So the big guy is inverse tang, okay, and the little guy is 1 over x. All right, so remember, uh, we know that the derivative of inverse tang is 1 over 1 minus x squared, okay? But the chain rule says do the derivative of the big guy and evaluate it at the little guy. Now, the little guy is 1 over x, so this is what we have here. Okay, so this is the derivative of the big guy, but it's evaluated at the little guy. So instead of x squared, we have 1 over x squared, because that's what our little guy is. And then the chain rule says multiply by the derivative of the little guy. So now we multiply by ddx of 1 over x. Okay? Um, but 1 over x is the same thing as x to the negative 1, right? It's x to the negative first power. And the derivative of that is negative 1 times x to the negative 2. Okay, so ddx of x to the negative first power, that's negative 1 times x to the negative second power. All right, and in other words, uh, that's just negative 1 over x squared. All right, so um, again, this is derivative of the big guy, evaluated at the little guy, okay, multiplied by the derivative of the little guy. So that's what we have here. Um, so now let's just simplify everything. So uh, this is going to be equal to 1 over 1 minus 1 over x squared, and then times this negative 1 over x squared out here. So what we could do is just, um, let's expand all this out here. So on the top, we just have 1 times negative 1, okay? So that's just a negative 1. Uh, and then what do we have on the bottom down here? On the bottom, we have 1 minus 1 over x squared multiplied by the x squared. So if we distribute everything through, that's going to be uh, 1 times x squared is just x squared. Minus 1 over x squared times x squared is just minus 1, okay? 
So what we have is a negative 1 divided by x squared minus 1. So we could multiply the top and the bottom by negative 1, and then that's just going to equal, uh, let's erase this over here, and then uh, that's just going to equal uh, positive 1 on the top, and then what happens on the bottom? Uh, well, if we multiply the bottom by negative 1, then we get negative x squared plus 1, which is 1 minus x squared. Okay, so uh, that's a 2 in the exponent there, that's x squared. So that's our result here, the one that we were looking for. So um, that's the proof that the derivative of inverse hyperbolic cotangent is equal to 1 over 1 minus x squared. And again, we have this restriction here that comes from the definition of inverse coth. Uh, so that's that. And the next two, uh, inverse hyperbolic secant and inverse hyperbolic cosecant, are going to be done the same way.